What's good, YouTube? Nobody here. Welcome to the build log for So, basically, I built this one while I was working on the tutorial for the PAM script. So, I'm going to go through and basically talk the way through in the way that I built this ship. So the main goal for this one when I started out was just to make a pretty large small grid ship that could hold a lot of cargo. So I went with, I believe, nine large cargo containers. The main reason for this was I knew I needed something for the series that I'm working on that would actually dig for a long period of time without taking too many breaks. And I figured the larger the cargo container, the longer it could dig. And to deal with these large cargo containers, I decided to use the large atmospheric thrusters. There's gonna be a lot of thrusters on here. So if you're planning to build this, make sure you have as many motors as you can get before you start. And to feed the beastly amount of motors that we have, I decided to put a ton of batteries. I didn't really count the batteries. I was thinking more about aesthetic purposes than anything. As you see, I actually moved the batteries around a little bit just to make them look a little bit better. It's still slightly off, but it's about as close as I can get it without redesigning the entire ship, and I don't think that would be worthwhile. I ended up going with a total of 16 batteries. It takes a long time to charge this setup, but it also lasts a decently long amount of time. And obviously, since this was actually made during the PAM video, this machine is equipped with PAM. At this point, I decided to go ahead and get it ready for PAM early. That way I wouldn't have to worry about it later. I only added the remote and the programmable block this early. So then I moved on to actually creating the space for the cockpit. I did something a little differently than usual this time. I actually remembered that it's got a small connector on the back. I usually forget that and mess it up and have to fix it later. So I'm pretty proud of myself on this one. I piped it in using a single side instead of the two sides that I usually use. The reason I did this is because I needed somewhere to put some gyroscopes later. I went with the regular cockpit because I don't have the DLC. I think the industrial cockpit would have looked really good on this one, but I don't have it yet, so I will be purchasing that in the future. I decided to go ahead and place the gyroscopes that I was talking about a few seconds ago. That way I wouldn't forget about them, and if I decided to put some armor up or something, then they would already be there. These aren't the only gyroscopes on the entire thing, but I like to hide them when I can. I decided to stay with the large thruster theme for this build, so I decided to put in all of our cardinal direction thrusters as large thrusters as well. I think this actually makes the ship look a little bit better and gives me a lot less guesswork to do on figuring out where to place everything. I added an extra thruster pointing to the rear, that way we would have a little bit more acceleration heading forward. Don't worry about the placement here i know it's a little off but i do fix that later when i started the undercarriage i needed a different placement for our anchor so i went ahead and moved that up to the cockpit now that we had that and i wouldn't be messing with it anymore i'm still a little new to using creative mode so i'm not 100 percent up to date on all the controls sometimes i forget that i can do specific things and at other times i just don't have the muscle memory built to hit the right key combinations to do what i know i can do normally when i do a vertical minor like I'm doing here. I'll actually put the drills pretty close to the containers but I decided to leave a little bit of distance this time that way that would leave me other places to build things and some pretty decent armor choices in the future. I decided to go in and fill the entire bottom area with drills obviously. That's the key to doing a very good vertical miner is to add enough drills to cover the entire platform. Now you can can go as many as three blocks apart for your drills. It's not always a good idea to do that. It's not as clean when you're drilling, but with what I was doing for this one, I didn't really need the cleanest, so I decided to go with the maximum distance in between. The main reason I did this was because I was already going to be using up a lot of resources on this build, and we don't have a ton on the Let's Play. I spent a little bit of time trying to figure out how I was going to pipe each one into the others. 
I went with a pretty interesting way of doing it, I think. Tried to keep it as symmetrical as possible. Normally, I would just go ahead and pipe everything into everything, but since we were going to be short on resources, I decided to use exactly what we needed, no more. That way, we don't have to worry about using too many of them. After I got the drills placed, I decided to go ahead and put in the conveyor sorters and ejectors. I like to do this as early as possible. I don't really know why, I just do. I think I like to think about the placement of them ahead of time because you're going to need a lot of them. So basically I get one sorter per drill, which actually helps out quite a bit I think. In the past you've been able to use a single sorter for a ton of ejectors, but it seems like now you only get one ejector per sorter, so you kind of think about that when you're designing your ships. You're going to need a lot of ejectors and a lot of sorters. Now, the one downside to that is you have to set each one of these ejectors up individually. If anyone knows of a script out there that will allow you to set multiple ejectors with the same whitelist quickly, please let me know. At this point, I decided that a single connection point between the drills and the ship just didn't look right at all so i decided to add some armor blocks as an appearance of stability since this is an industrial ship i wanted it to look like an industrial ship and actually have connections between everything instead of just being all willy-nilly. I decided to go with two leg-like structures that connected everything on each side in the front and the back. I actually added to this later when I was working on the actual armament for the entire build. Next, I decided while I was actually thinking about it that I would go ahead and add the ejectors as well. Since I had added the ejectors, I decided to go ahead and do some house cleaning. I went and set every single ejector to throw out and individually had to do each one of the small conveyor sorters with drain all and whitelisted stone for every one of them. Now that that was complete, it was actually time to take it out for its maiden voyage. Go test everything out, make sure it's all going to work before I start putting a lot of armor and stuff on it. I like to do this at this point, generally speaking. That way you know that you don't have to fix a lot of things. I'll usually run the vehicle for about an hour or two just to make sure that there's no major flaws with it or anything that you have to change after you get all the armor because that can be very, very annoying. But before we did that, I actually decided I needed a connector. So I did it a little differently than normal. I wanted to actually have a horizontal facing connector. So I decided to add it to the cockpit with an L bracket. Also, when I did this, I realized that I needed a larger drill platform, so I extended it out by one drill. The next thing I did was go ahead and get all the stuff ready for Pam. I'm not going to really go through what I did here because I've got an entire video dedicated to Pam, and that's a major part of the video. So if you want to see that, go ahead and click the link up in the upper right hand corner of your screen now. I added a camera to the front, which actually turns out to be pretty pointless because it doesn't line up correctly. I also realized that I didn't quite have enough gyros, so this is one of the main reasons why before I start adding armor and things like that, that I give it a test run. That way I'm sure that everything feels good and works well. That just saves you a lot of trouble in the future. That way you're absolutely certain that when you add the finishing touches, you are actually done. After letting the ship run for a while, as you see, it dug out quite a bit. I decided that the mechanics of the ship were actually good and it was time to start working on the armor. The main thing that I did with the armor on this one was tried to make sure that every piece was connected to something else through armor. That way it looked like the armor actually had a structural role. I think that's a good way to do it if you're gonna do an industrial build is just to make sure every, everything basically ties together. And as I went over a piece with the armor, I decided to actually add a little bit of flair to it to make it look like it was individually connected to each piece. So that's why you see me using a lot of angles here that go down into the piece of gear 
uh, such as the drills and the engines and all the other stuff. I also decided to change up the way that the little leg things look. I don't like straight lines on my armor, so as much as I can, I try to give it some sort of a curve and make it look functional. I didn't like the single line of conveyors that went up through the center, so I decided to go in and fill those in with armor as well. It gave me a nice place to build a central column, basically. After I got most of the armor put together, I decided it was time to give it a paint job. I started with the base coat of gray for everything, and then I changed up the individual pieces and parts based off of what they are. Anything that can hurt got yellow. Anything that is a basic block that is used within the function of the ship got blue. And then anything that's structural or conveyors basically ended up getting the dark gray color. After letting it run for a little while, I decided to go ahead and put some stuff on the batteries as well. They needed a little love. They were pretty bare. Also, I don't think it's a good idea to leave your batteries completely unprotected. If you're running something like Pirates or anything like that, then it's going to get shot. So you have to have at least something in the way of the bullet. Not to mention it's generally a good idea any industrial vehicle that you have to have everything protected just in case you run into a wall or something like that. Thank you for watching all the way through. If you want to see more of these build logs, let me know in the comment. Also, think about dropping a like and maybe a subscribe if you haven't already. Help us reach that goal of 1,000 subscribers. If you want to see more, click one of the two videos on your screen at this time. A link to this on the workshop will be in the description.